one solace that we can use in our miserable little lives is getting to know yourself so deeply and achieving an almost counterproductive level of self-awareness where you can pin every little state of being you're in on a reason, no matter how valid that reason is. Like being someone with a uterus, double-edged sword in that way, because in one way, it can make your emotions incredibly dysregulated, but in another, at least you have a reason. I cannot in good conscience tell you right now which phase of my period I'm in, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it's luteal because of the amount of irritability and anxiety and emotional dysregulation I'm feeling right now. Like I just feel truly like an hysterical woman. And when I check my period tracker, it's not looking very luteal. I want to believe that I have the mind-body connection at this esteemed age of 27 that I know when my body's in my luteal phase. And an app cannot tell me that. The app is wrong. I am right. And if it turns out that my period doesn't come for another two weeks, I don't know what this was. And that's a problem. It's a problem when I can't pin this on something because then suddenly I just have to get to an ultimate point of self-acceptance where I realize life gets worse and it gets better and it gets worse and it gets better. And I'm gonna feel bad and I'm gonna feel bad. I'm gonna feel good and I'm gonna feel bad. <sighs> it's just getting a bit exhausting and tired and... Oh my God. And now I just realized that I was filming that whole clip and my phone was facing the wrong direction which leads me to be even more irritable and upset. And the only advice I have to offer to myself is when I'm in this state again, do not attempt things that you do not know how to do and are challenging. For example, staining and finishing your mother freaking woodworking project. This is the bane of my existence. I am the daughter of a woodworker. I am the daughter of an engineer. Do I have like or maintain any of those skills no sometimes the apple falls so far from the tree it rolls down the hill and it looks more like a pear than an apple because i have none of this skill set and not only that i actually actively dislike this process it's pissing me off look how uneven this is the conditioner for the stain and look how uneven it is and the thing is you can give me advice i actually don't even want to figure this out i just want to finish it and have it look shitty I just like, I just like, it makes me so mad. I don't know why. I thought it would be a very nice release to accomplish something in this state of mind. Like, let me just get something off my plate that's been on for so long. Maybe that's why I'm feeling bad. No, 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 it backfired. It backfired in a big way. I literally just realized I told you guys, don't do things you've never done before. Well, I told myself, don't do things you've never done before that are challenging when you're in the state of mind. <laughs> Lo and behold, I signed up to go to an improv class tonight with somebody I just met, um, which is good for socialization as an extrovert. Like, I think part of this is just like, I need to be spending more time with people. Like, I cannot be doing all of my work online and socializing exclusively via FaceTime and Zoom calls and like that remote type of socializing. Like, I need the in-person release of energy this is like a brand new friend, like literally just met them over the weekend. So I'm like, they're going to be seeing me in a very choice state of mind. But what better test of a new friendship than seeing you in a vulnerable, erratic state? I'm fucking unhinged right now. Like, I just feel like I could tear a doll's head off. Um, and I don't feel anger very often. I'm just like so irritable. I'm just like irritable, like Jesus Christ. Yeah, let's hope I can, let's hope that although improv for the first time will be maybe upsetting, I improv all the time. Like, honest to God, I'm, I'm improving all the time. So I really don't feel like um, it'll be that new to me. <sighs> it is chilly. That's not too bad. What about Utah boy? You should be. Oh my fucking god. <laughs>
god, you guys. Oh my fucking god, are you ready for more eccentric night ramblings? Um, as long as there's no one on the street, we'll continue. I did not expect that to go that well. And honestly, I didn't want it to because I didn't want the arc. I selfishly didn't want the arc of this vlog to be, um, you can go outside and you can talk to people and you can express yourself and you can make art and that will make your irritability um, release. <laughs> I uh, didn't want to transform my attitude and my emotions and my well-being through expressing myself but yet again i found myself in this position and i literally have notes from how much i am multiplied and recreated by this night sometimes a night can be that good <sighs> so like literally so much so much sometimes you can walk out your door at 6 30 p.m to go to an improv class after begrudgingly trying to stain your table alone and resenting how much time you've been spending in the digital realm. And sometimes you can walk out of your house 6.30 p.m. and sometimes you'll come back at midnight having made multiple friends and maybe a crush. <laughs> no one wants to hear about my crushes anymore. Nobody wants to hear about them. Everyone's soured on it. It is a lay your head on the bed type of night. <laughs> I... Like, this is the this is the double-edged sword of being so sensitive, um, is that things can really flip on a dime. Like, I am so susceptible, and I am such an extrovert that the energy of other people can literally embed into my consciousness and shift the entire mechanism of my outlook. I am alive and rejuvenated. I And I did know that this was going to help me. Like, I said it on the clips before, like, I know that I needed in-person time. And I knew that I needed something analog off my phone. And that's exactly what this night was. I didn't touch my phone from 7 p.m. until now. Five hours. Hallelujah. And I got in-person interaction with like 20 people. And they were all beloved. I knew, I know what's right for me. But sometimes it's not always that easy. It's not always that much of a layup. And tomorrow the, this, <laughs> tomorrow the table sits in my living room unstained. And tomorrow I will tackle it. I was going to finish it tonight because I thought I was going to have plenty of time, but I chose to socialize instead. And I will always choose to socialize because that fills me up more than anything. And it's great to be in a space of people that also recognize that and value that. Okay, good night. This video project of mine is sponsored by Keen because as you can tell by the first half of this video, psychically, I need help. And Keen is basically a hub of tarot readers, mediums, astrologers, feng shui experts, and offers a really direct way to book a reading with any of those folks. I watched this show called Maggie last year and it was about a psychic and it kind of made me wonder like what that experience is like and it piqued my interest. So I've been sort of waiting for the right opportunity to open myself up to that side of mysticism and just see what it's all about. So I talked to, I'll tell you a little bit about my reading if you also have been more closed off to that world. It was like so approachable, not intimidating at all. She gave me sort of like her initial reading and then I was able to ask follow-up questions. She did say I was an old soul, so there's that. I asked about how I can be less attached and like obsessive. And she did indeed advise writing a letter to my angels and then burning it. And also cleaning up trash, which I think is a beautifully symbolic way to like cleanse your spirit is to go pick up some trash. I think that's a very materially helpful thing. And it's like got some great symbolism in it. If you want to get a reading on Keen like I did, it's super easy to start. All you have to do is create an account on their site and then you can basically search and filter for hundreds of readers that are available right now. You can do a phone call or a text chat and as a new customer, the first 10 minutes of your reading would only be $1.99, which is up to $99 in savings. Try keen.com slash Katharout. We'll connect you with all of that. It'll be in my description to save big on your first reading and join me in playfully exploring the supernatural. And now on to more of my very moody summer. Okay, it's been long enough in between that clip and this one that my hair is now fully a different color, but I needed to come on here to tell you a story in two to four tweets. I was starting to feel like the serendipity of my life was curtailing a bit.
My sense of mystic optimism was trailing behind me. I felt like maybe I'd left that in the spring and the mania of summer had dulled it for me. I was starting to feel like the plot of my life was starting to thin out, okay? That is cat speak for sliding into depression a little bit, okay? I was wallowing. And it, 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 it's bad when it gets to the point that I feel the compulsion to tweet it, to put a signpost in it, as if it's like here to stay. And the funny thing is the synchronicity of this vlog is like, here's the outfit I chose to wear today. What outfit was I just vlogging in? The same one, the same one. Was I wearing a little bandana? Yeah, yeah. The astute viewers among us may remember that. Those of us with really good viewing comprehension, I know I wouldn't remember that. Anyway, serendipitously, the last time I tweeted emo shit on Maine was when I was wearing this outfit on that day I vlogged. I cannot remember for the life of me what the exact tweet is, and I put many blessings upon my brain that I cannot remember my tweets verbatim because that would be so fucking scary if I could literally quote you what I tweeted like two months ago now. I was feeling so emo today like just feeling like I was depression sliding and feeling lonely and just like, I want freshness in my life. I was like, I wanna make more bike friends. I remember I had been to this bike party in the Bay Area in San Jose, which was like a little like ravey, everyone rides through the street together and like plays music out loud. And it's just like, you like stop a couple places and you like dance. And I went with my family and it was like such a weird vibe. We went for my dad's birthday cause he loves to bike. Apple fell a little for a little closer to the tree because I love to bike too. So that's something I did inherit from my my dear papa. And thank God. Thank God. Um So, I googled if they had those here and lo and behold there was one the next day and I was like that's a fucking sign. Do I like to find significance in insignificant things? Yeah, insignificant things? Yeah, because why not? Why not? Why not find meaning in everything? How's that gonna hurt? Um, make, makes life feel more magical. So I was like, you know what? I have to go. I don't have a single friend here that like has a bike. Like I literally don't know any. So I'm like, you know what? How am I gonna make bike friends? Go to places where people that like to bike go. And so I showed up there tonight and I was like, this is so, I went alone and I was like, this is so like, um, just so random. Like I was like, who the hell just like shows up to one of these things? I was like, I was halfway in, halfway out where I was like, it's this long ass ride. If I told myself, if you go, same thing as the improv thing. If you go and it sucks, you can leave. Like if you go and you don't want, want to go, you're on a bike, you can just split off. Ended up having the ride of my life. Even when I was alone at the start and didn't know the culture of it and didn't know what was happening and felt like an outsider, I was still grinning. Like I was still like, this is very delightful. And like, it's just good to, even if I'm talking to no one, it's just, as an extrovert, I like to just be in a big group of people who share my interests. Like, it's just like nice. I'm just like listening to music outside, in the sun, biking, yelling, screaming. People are like honking. I'm like, this is fun. This is fun. And I ended up meeting a couple people who I found endearing and likable. And the, the, what did I do when I came home? I found myself wanting to go back to that t email last tweet and correct its form. I wanted to be like, you know what? That was off. I wasn't, I was wallowing and now I'm like, now I'm restored, like I'm refreshed. Like it literally is so, I was like just commenting on it and I was like, I was like, oh, I should film a whole vlog. And then I realized I already filmed a whole vlog in this vest with this almost exact day where it started out shitty and I was irritable. And then I did one event where I meet new people. I meet one new person eight hours after I tweet that and the whole thing flips on its head. And I'm like, sometimes like making friends is so simple. Like it, we make it so, I build it up in my head as something so difficult, but I'm like meeting new people in the summertime can just unfold if you pick an interest you have Google that interest. Someone doesn't have to tell you about it. You can just Google it. Google that interest and show up to something. And then it does require, I will acknowledge, I will acknowledge, it required me being a little outgoing. I'm not an outgoing person. Don't mistake 
that. I, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't be the one talking about friendship, but I am not an outgoing extrovert. I know a lot of introverts that are more outgoing than I am. Like I don't usually go up to strangers. I went to this March um, during Pride weekend with my friend when they were visiting and they were commenting that like, they really wanted to meet other people, but because we were together, I didn't feel compelled as much to like reach out and like start a conversation. But when you go to something alone, like I went to improv actually with that friend, but I ended up showing up alone. And then I went to this alone. Like you feel more compelled to like, you know, somebody like you see some weird thing on the street and you're like, that was weird. That's like literally all it takes. That's like how the conversation started. It was just like this woman was like, fuddling with her phone like filming us and I was like who who the hell is this our social media manager and then it's just you know oh is this your first time here and then bada bing bada boom bada bing bada boom it just so happened the person I talked to I actually did have an affinity for and I was like oh I like your sense of humor um but sometimes you meet people and they don't have your sense of humor and that's totally fine but it's like I just think it's so serendipitous that each one of these events, I did not, ex like, I was going into it looking to make friends, but fully expecting that, like, you can't just, I was like, I've heard this before, you can't just show up to a one-off, one-time event and expect to meet somebody, especially with these, like, reoccurring improv drop-in workshops or this, like, bike disco thing. Um, you can't expect to go one time and, and go again in a month and see the same people, and, like, that doesn't usually work, but I'm like, it can work if you meet one person that first time and then coordinate with them, coordinate with them to go the next time. Because if I hadn't made a friend, I probably would have tried to convince one of my friends here to get a bike and come with me. But I'm like, oh, this worked out so much better. I'm long winded. I'm never going to apologize for that. I thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. And Cather out. Fuck influencing people to download some mobile game. I want to influence people to go to wonderful community driven events and introduce friendship building strategies yeah